let me first get out of the way how I got into mathematics. My father is an engineer who um, chose engineering even though he wanted to be a mathematician. And for whatever reasons, he, he was scared about job security, finding jobs, the future, whatever. When he was young, he decided to be an engineer. Um, and I don't think he ever once told me study mathematics, but as a, just a kid walking around the house, I saw that he was and doing things, I was as asking him, what are you doing? I, I, I noticed curious books in his bookshelf, and whenever I asked, he would sit, sit down with me and explain to me in a very, um, in a way which really, really interested me. So I, I, I really got into it just because I saw my father, um, maybe because he didn't choose it to pursue um, his dream, um, I saw him genuinely interested. And, and gr when you grow up and you see your father genuinely interested, deeply interested in something, it inspires you. So I don't have any other story beyond that. I just, um, I saw the love for mathematics in him. Um, but I was never pushed to do it. Um, the rest of the story is very similar to what we heard from Hiroku and Martin. I, I mean, I, I was also into science. I think the only difference is that I think I was good at experiments. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, and moreover, okay, I, I said my, my father was an engineer, um, but all of, he was the kind of the, what? Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. So, he, but he was an engineer, but he's kind of the black sheep of the family. Everybody else were medical doctors. And I was very much into um, biology, most, mostly into the biological. I was all interested in all sciences, but mostly into biological things and, and actually my way to rebel as a teenager is not to be a, a human medical doctor, I wanted to be a veterinarian. Um, <laughs> but, um, and and, and, and I, was I was really spending all of my afternoons doing things, e either physics, chemistry, but I was also, I went to the veterinarian of my dog when I was a teenager, was a very nice person and he saw that I'm interested, I was, and, and he told me, you know what, I teach at the university, you can come, but even though you're not a formal student, you can come to the classes. And as and I was really hands-on. I, I did dozens of surgeries, and I was really into uh, into not mathematics, definitely, but science. So I was getting this infusion of mathematics at home from a father who loves it, but I was doing other things. Um, and I also, like you, I started with physics. Um, honestly, the real reason I moved at the end of the first year from, from physics to mathematics is this feeling, and, and this is still what I love about mathematics today, that was one of the questions we got, is this feeling that I can choose a problem where I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I love the, this feeling of helplessness at the beginning. And, 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 and together with optimism that, that eventually I'll know. Okay, but this feeling of complete helplessness, there, th and that's the reason why I didn't continue with experiments, for example. There is no first step. I love those questions. This is the, the thing, what this is, there is no first thing to try, or the first thing to set up, to take a petri dish, you know, get your tools together. There is none of that for some of the problems in mathematics, and I think that's wonderful. It's not for everybody, but for me, this is what I love most in my life, th this feeling of, complete helplessness in the beginning, together with optimism, that in the end, it I'll know, even if 99% of the time, that's false optimism. Um, <laughs> um, my recommendation would be, um, yeah, uh, s try to learn as, really focus, try to stay as far, it, it stay, and this is maybe bad advice, some people might not agree with me, try to stay away from research as, for as long as you can. Try to learn as much as possible. Learn things which are not obviously related to what you think you're going to work on, because if you learn only things which are obviously related, you're going to do good work, but maybe not so surprising. or not. Uh, so really, really explore far afield. I remember um, the way, probably now it's online, but I would get the printout of the dis course descriptions as an undergrad. Um, and I would choose courses which, in the, in the blurb, in the course description, there was the biggest amount of words that I had no idea what they meant. And again, optimism would be, at the end of the year, I will know what all of this means. So I, was, I would choose things which were on purpose, cryptic, which is the exact opposite, by the way, of those of you as faculty members. Now when there is a talk announcement, which has words which we don't understand, we don't go to it. 
but 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 and, and that is one of the, and, and I'm and I'm the same. It, but when I was but in the beginning, I would maximize the unknown in, in the description, together with the understanding that it, it would be exciting. That at the end, I'll know what all of this means. And I remember really the day I chose my research topic, and, and I do geometry from I, I came from analysis, but I apply it to geometry. The day I, re I actually. I, we were asked about what, what advice would you give your 19-year-old self. I, I don't remember, definitely, my, I don't remember everything I was thinking, not the, as a 19-year-old self, but when I, I do remember a, the day in which I decided what my PhD research topic will be, I remember it as one of the, maybe the, definitely one of the saddest days of my life, because it wasn't a positive decision. It was a decision to say goodbye to everything else. Because all of us, when you go to university, when you study, I think this is true for all mathematicians, when we go into mathematics, we like everything. We, we really, really like everything, and at some point we have to say bye to everything and specialize. And to go deep into anything, you have to specialize. And, and once you specialize, and this is one of the great things that Michel Talegrand, one of his great um, traits is that, and I, and I agree with it, is that once you specialize, once you choose something you want to understand, you don't give up even if it takes 20 years. And they say, the thing I'm working on right now, and even on the flight over, is something that I've been working, thinking about daily for 20 years, and all of a sudden it's crumbling. It's a great feeling, but in year 15, it seems like nothing is happening. So once you specialize, you stick to it. That's the only way to get far, at least for me. But the, the, the day I decided to specialize was a very, very sad day. It wasn't a positive choice. It was a, a day of saying goodbye. So this is your opportunity to not choose. Okay, and, 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 and you will eventually, all of us will eventually choose and specialize and stick to something. That's going to be st something which is mandatory, that's part of life, but it's going to be, I think, a sad day. And you're before that sad day and maximize the exploration and try to go as far afield from what you think you'll be doing as you can. That's, that's my recommendation. less of a role to authority. No matter how famous you are, no matter how great a mathematician is, when they claim a theorem, everybody says, show us the proof. And this is very, this is, this is you cannot say by authority I'm telling you this is true. This is, and, and this is wonderful, because that's what makes us all approachable. Because even though I am already at Princeton and I prove things, if, I, if any of you, if I claim a statement, you have every right and I expect you to demand proof. And we don't work by authority. We work because we like this field, and we prove, and we interact by the because by for the science, not by authority. Okay, so I think I don't think it's sad. I think this makes us this makes it yeah. friendly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and remember this: no matter how famous, how old a mathematician you meet, they need to prove. They need to, you. They need to prove to you. Okay, and, and that means that we're all equals at the end, at, at the moment of truth. Well, it's truly inspiring. Yeah. It's, it is. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.